Welcome to the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon. I'm your host, Captain Matt, and today we're talking about bayliners. Everywhere you turn on the internet, uh, Facebook, in chat rooms, on my YouTube channel, I keep getting comments that bayliner sucks. So I wanted to give you my take uh, on does bayliner suck. So here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk a little bit about the history. We're going to talk the good. We're going to talk the bad. We're going get, to get to the truth. And I'm also going to answer the question, should you buy a Bayliner or would I buy a Bayliner more specifically? Of course, we're brought to you by the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon. Um, you can grab your free toolkit. There's been over 2,500 downloaded. You can listen to the podcast on Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio. Check out the articles at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com. And of course, check out the over 100 videos here on the YouTube channel. I'm sure there's more that will be valuable for you. Uh, in your boating life, over 5,800 subscribers, over 600,000 video views, uh, and that's as of this recording. So let's talk about the history. Well, Bayliner had a huge impact on the boating industry. In 1957, they were started, um, but they were the first manufacturer to package a boat, a motor, and a trailer. Um, that was the that was kind of their claim to fame that they put all of those together. Now, it wasn't in 1957. Uh, but that was their stamp on the industry. In 86, they were acquired by Brunswick for $425 million. Um, and in that acquisition, they got the Chrysler motor, which was the force motor, which was the Mercury motor for a couple of years. Um, and we'll talk about that and why that's important. In 2000, they spun off the Trophy brand, which was their fishing boat line that they've recently relaunched in 2020. Um, in 2013, they introduced the Bayliner Element line, which was a, a bare bones based little deck boat with an outboard and is a, a big part of their uh, offering right now. But their claim to fame, I got this from the website, I didn't verify it because uh, I'm not really sure how, but they put more people on the water than any other recreational boating company. So that's uh, there's a lot of Bayliners out there in the world, and, and I think that's um, one of the reasons why they have the reputation. So let's first start with resale value. So I did a little bit of research. I just went to nadaguides.com, and you can do this for the model that you're looking at. And I just looked at a 20-foot um, uh, Bayliner. So the approximate depreciation in the first two years is about 10%. So um, about what you would expect for a, a boat. Now, this is in 2021. We've had the pandemic. We've had the boat market rise significantly. So that may change over time, but this is where it's at right now. In three to five years, figure approximately 7% on a new one um, or, or that's in that age category. From six to 10 years, about 5% a year. So if you're buying a used Bayliner, you know, there's not going to be a whole lot of depreciation after it's about six years old or more. And then 10 years old or older, it's minimal. It, it really is a matter of the condition that you keep it in, how well you maintain it. Um, I've got a friend that owned a Bayliner. I just talked to him before and uh, he owned his, um, it was a 18 foot Bayliner a 2004 model. Um, he owned it for four years and it cost him about a thousand dollars a year, um, to, to own that Bayliner. So, so very good resale as you get into the used ones. And of course on a new one, there's going to be more now Bayliners aren't perfect. Okay. They, they've got a bad reputation in the marketplace. You can't say the, the brand Bayliner without somebody having um, an opinion come to their mind of it, and more than likely it's negative. And here's a, a lot of the reasons why. First of all, many Bayliners out in the marketplace, even new ones on showroom floors, are underpowered. W the reason why? Well, Bayliner is a value-level boat, an entry-level boat, a price point boat, however you want to call it, and they're trying to get that price at a level that people are comfortable spending that money. Well, here's the thing is that means that, oh, we could put, it probably should have a, a 150 on it, but we're going to put a 115 on the base. Um, now you can order it with the 150, but because we want that, we want to keep that price down. Uh, we sell it at a 115 and then people buy it because it's cheaper and then it's underpowered when they, when they go to resell it or when they go to use it and they're not super happy with it. Structural issues in the past. Because they're a price point boat, 
they started in the in the 90s and 2000s where everybody was moving to encapsulated uh, plywood and they were they were glassing things in more so that it addressed the rot issue. Well, Bayliner was using a little bit cheaper build process, a little bit cheaper material, and it caused some structural issues. They weren't laying as much fiberglass, which we'll talk about, uh, and they were using the chopper gun, which means that they were just spraying the fiberglass in with the gun instead of laying it sheet by sheet. It's not as strong in that method, which I need to make a video on chop guns uh, versus laid fiberglass and the difference and why it matters. But essentially, it's not as strong. It's not as sturdy when you use a little bit cheaper material, when you're not um, encapsulating any wood in the boat uh, and protecting it from any water intrusion, which means rot, which means structural issues. Um, cheaper boat means cheaper materials. Just There's just no way around that. Any boat that's cheaper than another boat, it's likely because they've either left options out or they've used cheaper material if everything is the same. They didn't use as much fiberglass. They didn't use as heavy of, of grade of uh, a stainless or hardware. Um, they're not backplating things the same way. But if a boat is cheaper, it is 99% of the times true that they're using cheaper materials or less materials. Now, another issue with Bayliner, if you go to buy a Bayliner, understand it's not a prestigious brand name and they're bad mouthed by a lot of people, which means when you pull up to the gas dock, there's going to be people that snicker and say, look at that dummy. He bought a Bayliner. Um, that's just, that's the truth of the matter. And we'll talk about whether I think that's true or not in just a little bit. Um, and another thing on used Bayliners is many of them are not well-maintained. Because they're an entry-level boat, because they're first-time boaters, boaters don't always know what maintenance to do. They don't always do it even if they know it, or they don't have the money to do it because they stretched their budget to buy this boat, and now it doesn't get uh, maintained the proper way, which leads to issues down the line uh, and something that you need to be aware of uh, when you're looking at a used boat. And again, we'll talk about that as well. So some used Bayliner issues specifically is the Bayliner Rendezvous. <coughs> Excuse me, a great boat. Um, roomy, a ton of room. Um, they they sold a lot of these in the, the mid-90s. <coughs> Excuse me, in the mid-90s. Um, here's the issue with that Bayliner Rendezvous is it's a tunnel haul boat and it takes a special trailer. So a lot of them that are in the marketplace right now are great deals because they don't have a trailer or the trailers in really, really rough shape. And those trailers are super hard to find and super expensive when you do find them. So you may find a $4,000 rendezvous that seems like a smoking deal. And it's only the ones with the tunnel halls. Um, and it's in that mid 90 range. Um, and you'll notice it cause it almost looks like a catamaran. It's got like two pontoons on it and a, a tunnel down the middle, almost like a, a pontoon or a fiberglass pontoon. Those make sure that you really inspect the trailer well. And if it doesn't have a trailer, make sure that you don't need one, you won't need one, or you figure that into your budget and, and price it out. Go to a trailer manufacturer uh, because you're going to have to custom order one. You're not going to find a used one in the marketplace. Uh, it, it's like finding a unicorn. The next is the Bayliner Capri with the Force engines. I, I made it a video, what boats not to buy. And a, a boat with the Force engine um, that was the original Chrysler engine. Uh, then Bayliner bought it and they branded it Force. It had a ton of issues in those years. And then Mercury or Brunswick bought Bayliner and now they own Mercury. So they rebranded it as Mercury. They made some improvements, but even those um, for a, a year or two had some had some similar issues. But stay away from that uh, Capri with the Force unless you know what you're doing. You're able to work on them, um, and, and you know what you're getting into. But if you're, if you're not that mechanical person that can fix anything, has access to parts, know exactly what you're getting into, stay away from it. Um, other things to, to be concerned about on a used Bayliner is be sure to inspect the deck or the floor uh, and the stringers. There's a lot of issue with rot, especially still in those early 2000 models. Um, there was some exposed wood. And again, because it's a value boat um, and they don't use the same level of materials, the same build process, the same amount of materials, quality of materials, there's more likely to have a soft floor 
um, than if you were, were looking at a similar year model in a newer boat. Uh, again, there are a lot of first-time buyers that buy these, so they, they don't know all the ins and outs of how to take care of them. They may mount something into the boat that causes water intrusion. Oh, water intrusion and causes issues with rot and things like that. So really make sure you inspect that. If you haven't watched our video on how to inspect a used bow rider or a deck boat, and we'll go into more details, there's more of those videos coming in the future, really inspect that transom. Again, if they mounted a transducer or they mounted something on the, on the stern of the boat, and now there's water intrusion, it's more likely that you've got a rotten transom and you're going to have issues there. So really inspect that. The older you go, the more concerned I have with these types of things. And inspect the lockers. Look up under the lockers, stick your head in there, get a flashlight, really go through it, follow everything on that boat buyer's checklist that's in the toolkit, watch the videos on how to inspect a used boat because there could be some hidden problems uh, in those lockers that you'd be able to see and will keep you from making a major mistake. Now let's look at the new bay liners. So the new bay, they're very basic. They're very simple. Remember you're buying the boat. It's not a Mercedes. It's not a BMW. It's not a Cadillac. It's like a Kia. It's very basic, very simple so that you can get into new boats with a full warranty and hit a, a lower price point. They're inexpensive. They're inexpensive again, which means if it's a cheaper boat, cheaper materials and less materials. That's just the reality of it. Um, doesn't make it bad necessarily, but it makes it cheaper and it means that it's not going to be as durable. It's not going to be as sturdy. It's not going to ride quite as well because it's not as heavy. Um, although because they're owned by Brunswick, they do have a lot of intelligence in the company. Uh, they do have a lot of efficiencies in the material that they buy. So that offsets a little bit, but it's still an inexpensive boat that's built to a lesser quality standard, lesser materials, lesser build specifications. Now, if you're looking at a Bayliner, you're probably also looking at a Tahoe, um, not the Tahoe Avalon Tahoe pontoons, but the Tahoe boat sold at Bass Pro Shop. Um, and that leads us to the last one is researching the dealer. If I was comparing a Bayliner to a Tahoe, let's say the, the 16 element versus the Tahoe 16 footer, they both have Mercury's. They both are a value boat. They're both priced very similar. What it comes down to to me is what dealer is going to support you better. Um, and, and that's how I would make my decision is that dealer is oh so important, especially for a first time boater, a first time boat buyer. There's a lot of information and education that you need. And if that dealer is going to give you that support, that's the one that you want to go to. If they don't seem like they're going to give you that support, I would steer clear of that brand and that dealer uh, because they have a lot of impact on how much you're going to enjoy the boat, how much you're going to enjoy boating, and if you're going to stick with it for the long haul uh, and make sure that, um, that you have a great experience. So what's my opinion is you pay less, you get less. I saw this on one of the threads as I was researching what people were saying, and it gave me the idea for this video. Um, and that's exactly what you need to go into buying a Bayliner with this is, hey, I know I'm going to be able to get a 20 foot, a 20 foot bow rider um, with a 150 um, horsepower outboard on it. And I know I'm going to pay less, but I'm going to get less. And I'm OK with that. I'm OK with having a uh, gel coat that's that's half as thick as you would find on a, a up, you know, cobalt or a sea ray or a chaparral. I'm okay with that. Um, you know, it's, it's not going to be a problem for me. Uh, I'm okay with the ride quality, not being quite as good. I'm okay with not having the same sturdiness to the windshield sturdiness to the hardware, um, thickness of the upholstery and double stitching and all of the other stuff. Just understand that don't expect a Cadillac or a Mercedes level uh, when you're buying a Kia, it's the same thing. Don't expect that Cobalt C Ray Chaparral level when you're buying a Bayliner, but you are getting a, a Mercury or a Mercruiser engine. So you're getting the same engine that you would find in a C Ray, the same engine that you may find in a, a Cobalt or a um, or a Chaparral or a um, Stingray. Uh, you know they may offer Volvo as well, but you're getting the exact same engine, which is a probably half the cost or so um, of the boat itself. So you're getting that same engine, that same warranty. And because Bayliner is owned by Brunswick, 
you've got that connection of Mercury, Bayliner, and Brunswick for warranty issues. You know, you're covered by a really quality company. Um, and, and from what I know in the industry is, is Bayliner does a pretty fair job of um, handling their warranty claims. Again, it goes back to the dealer. How good is the dealer at working through the warranty process with Brunswick? Um, are they turning in good quality claims? Are they doing the work the right way? So that dealer relationship, when you're looking at an entry-level boat, is, is really, really key. Um, First-time boaters don't always understand this, but take my word for it, in my, my 40 years of boating, my over 10 years being an insider in the industry, that the relationship with the dealer on a new boat is going to be very, very important. If you're buying a used boat from a private individual, you need to find somebody that's going to that's going to help you learn your local waterways, understand how to operate your boat in a safe and fun way. It's a lot more fun when you know what you're doing. Um, you're, you're not hesitant to pull up to the dock or, or put it on the trailer or whatever. If you know what you're doing, you have a hell of a lot more fun. But because of the Mercury and the Brunswick connection, um, that pushes it over the line for me that, Hey, would I buy a Bayliner? I personally, I would never buy a new Bayliner. Uh, it's, it's not something I would do if I was buying a new boat. Uh, it would be on the, it would be on the higher end. I think I've said it before. I'd, I would have buy a pontoon, a tritune with the 150. To me, that's the perfect boat for my family. Um, but I would buy a used Bayliner. You know, I, I would buy a boat that, I could buy for 15,000, I could run it for two or three years and sell it for 12,000. I would be totally happy with that. But with that said, I would go through that boat with a fine tooth comb. I would have my boat buyer's toolkit, my checklist. I would have that compression checked on the engine. I would have the gear lube checked, the oil checked. Um, I may even pull the drive because again, most people that own bay liners are, are first time boaters and sometimes they don't understand the importance or don't do the maintenance that's required. But I would absolutely buy a Bayliner if it went through and it met my checklist. On the new side, hey, if I'm going to buy a new boat, um, I personally uh, would go with the higher end. If I couldn't meet that budget, me personally, I would buy a used boat um, and, and go through the checklist to make sure I'm getting a good deal uh, than, than worrying about the warranty. That's my personal preference. But again, I know boats extremely well. I know I can buy a five-year-old used boat and, and find one that's very, very unlikely to have an issue pop up. Um, so that's my personal preference. On the If you're somebody that really likes that warranty, then if it was a friend of mine, I would say, hey, here's, here's the things to consider. Would you, would you rather drive a brand new Kia or would you rather buy a five-year-old um, uh, Mercedes? Or maybe maybe this is better. Would you rather buy a, a, a Kia brand new or would you rather get a three-year-old Ford Explorer? Me, I would rather have that Ford Explorer. It's a little bit nicer um, and, and buy it on the used side knowing that it's going to have a lot of life left in it. That's just my personal preference on things uh, and the way I approach it. So there you go. Be sure to grab that Boat Buyer Secret Weapon Toolkit. Watch all the other videos. We've got over 100 videos. Um, I try to respond to all the comments. So leave a comment. Let me know if you've actually owned a Bayliner, what your experience was. Um, if you have a bad experience or good experience, let us know so that we get real world opinions. I think so many people out there have a bad opinion of Bayliner and they've never actually owned one. They've never operated one. Um, they've never talked to somebody that's actually owned one. Uh, but there's so much bad um, comments on the internet that you're dumb if you buy a Bayliner. I've had people say, I don't even boat near Bayliner owners because they're the worst boaters in the world. Well, not true. I've run Bayliners. I know people that have owned Bayliners. Like I said, I talked to my friend Josh for about 20 minutes before I recorded this. And um, him and his family, a young family, you know, bought a, a $6,500 boat, put a, a little bit of maintenance into it over the couple of years um, and, and sold it and had, you know, like I said, it cost him about a thousand bucks a year, uh, including the maintenance. So um, a great opportunity for a lot of people, but be sure that you're smart. Use the toolkit. 
um, watch my other videos, and um, here's some that YouTube's recommended. Grab that toolkit at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. Subscribe to the channel because we're always releasing new videos, and we will see you on the next one. Remember, life truly is better on a boat.